Is your remote control stuck on C-SPAN as you dream of being a politician? Or do you simply want to live a life of public service? Well, there's a lot of places to start. Coming up on Campus Conversations, we'll look at politics in and around Montgomery College. Welcome to Campus Conversations. I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer. With elections coming up, political ads are hitting traditional and social media with force. So today, we thought we'd talk politics. With me now is Professor Carl Smith, a political science and history professor here at Montgomery College. Thanks for joining us today. It's my pleasure, Fritzi. Thanks for having me. So as a political science professor, maybe you can explain to us why do we need to take courses or to understand political science, why is it important? Well, I, as I t say to my students often, that even though you may be an engineering major or a health science nursing major or pharmacy major, uh, what those things have in common is that you'll be actively residing and, and, and actively working in this community. And uh, what happens in an American government class or an introduction to political science class is you understand the theory of how our government and how our governmental structure and our political system is organized. Right? And so it touches on you no matter what major you have. You, you don't have to be a law major, you don't have to be a political science major to understand, well, we, the laws and the politics and government has an impact on nursing, engineering, uh, computer science, uh, and sports management and just about any other major you can think of. So that's why I think it's really important. What are some of the courses that we have here at the college that someone could enroll in to learn more? Well, you know we have a, a degree in international studies. It's part of the Associates of Arts program. And uh, so we don't have a political science major uh, that you would see at a four-year school, but we do pretty good for a two-year school. We have uh, lots of courses such as comparative politics. Uh, I'm teaching a course in political theory. Uh, we have American government, which is very popular for uh, its transferable, transferability. Uh, we have courses in politics of the developing world, uh, state and local politics. Um, that was an exciting class we had uh, a couple years ago at the Tacoma Park campus uh, where the instructor was br brought in uh, state legislatures, uh, members of the city council, uh, I'm sorry, the county council, uh, to come in and talk to the students and you know, is a wonderful opportunity for the students to interact. And the class was seven, eight, ten people you know, to have that forum with, the, with uh, a person who is in office and, and has the ability to, to shape policy. So it was a great thing. Speaking of shaping policy, um, one of the ways that we all communicate a little bit differently now is through social media. And I'm curious um, how social media is maybe changing, maybe this is too broad, but how it's changing the political system or how we get our voices heard or how politicians talk to us. Well, it's a different channel for communication. It's a different way for uh, people to interact and it allows for a more, um, how should I say, a citizen rapid response <laughs> team to be developed. Uh, in the past, if uh, there was a legislator, if there was a politician, official, who was doing something that people needed to know about, they had only a couple channels to, to, to know about those things. Maybe a paper like the Washington Post or New York Times or something like that on a national level. Um, but social media allows for uh, people to know immediately what somebody voted on, what somebody said, uh, what, how they responded to a, 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 a national event or a national crisis. Uh, and then you can build a network from that. And so you see things that are happening, and we hear, hear this phrase going viral. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think viruses spread that rapidly. <laughs> 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 uh, where, you know, 24 hours, uh, they, we have tens of thousands of people responding to things, like, like what's happening in Ferguson, uh, Missouri, over the last uh, three weeks or so. And maybe this is related to social media, maybe not, but is there a generational difference? We always hear around election time about getting young people to vote, and just over your career and your studies, is there a difference in how every generation responds to the issues? 
Well, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. And I think there's some research out there that indicates that people are getting their information from different sources. Young people maybe are, are more aware and uh, more uh, cyber savvy and are using social networks to get the information. But what you do with that information is still pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. uh, do you attend council meetings? Uh, do you vote in your uh, in local elections? Local elections are, are just as important as the national elections, um, but a lot of people tend to overlook those you know, local or, or midterm elections. Uh, so, well, why do you think that is, by the way? Why do people not vote in those midterm elections? Or well, vote that's a good question. I think it, they don't get the same level of attention. Um, you know, our president is our only nationally elected official. So I think uh, there's a lot of attention to that. It is a very important role. Um, we don't have a monarchy. <laughs> so in many ways, the president stands in for the symbol of what the nation is. Uh, so it's not just a managerial role. It's also a role that's symbolic, you know, holding the nation together. Um, and so we don't get, a lot of those local elections don't get as much as attention as, as, they, as they should. Um, and then I would say next in attention is gubernatorial elections. But people who are savvy, and we see the political movement uh, on the right in this country that have realized that those local elections are just as important as those national elections. So in certain states, there's been a, a very big push on getting the vote out in um, uh, midterm primaries uh, for school board elections. Uh, so you can control what the curriculum will be, or you'll have some input on what the curriculum will be on your local school board. That's very important. Um, but sometimes the, you know, the media doesn't, and also I would say the media doesn't pay attention to those things. Uh, sometimes ambulance chasing becomes a, a bigger lead story on the local news than, say, a, a, a school board meeting uh, discussing school budgets. So. Well, speaking of voting, I think this is a good time. We went out on campus and we talked to some of our students just before the Maryland primary election about some of the issues that are important to them. I think student loans is a really serious thing that um, we need to put more attention towards. And I would say transportation personally because I struggle with getting around either whether I'm using a bike or a car. I think just issues on uh, immigration because I know in the past Maryland has had kind of like a strict immigration policy and I've seen both sides of the issue just regarding immigration and then as a Hispanic I, I, I'm kind of more aware of that topic. I think one of the main issues is the um, insurance health insurance problems nowadays that you know after they change all the laws and um, the things that, you know, were changed last year, a lot of people can't afford anymore. I would say the issues of education, cost of college, um, jobs, and, and, you know, trying to get the, the unemployment rate fixed because it's still pretty bad. Um, and yeah, trying to lower the cost of education, really, that's pretty important and relevant to me because I'm a college student. Housing is very important to me because of the homelessness that we have in Montgomery County. We have a high percentage of homeless. And I believe that um, affordable housing will help the homeless afford better housing in Montgomery County. Probably the student loans, um, like basically the economy, the jobs, and affordable housing, because I feel like they're all kind of interrelated. So there's a lot of things that students are concerned about, particularly, I, I think it's uh, pretty obvious, they're all worried about the cost of college. Sure. And I just got to say, I love when our students address issues mm -hmm. like that. I just, I just feel empowered when I hear that. Uh, yes, the cost of education is important, and, and they pick up on a key thing. Uh, throughout the country, a lot of state institutions have been underfunded for 10, 20 years, depending on which mm -hmm. state you're looking at. Uh, and so the way that uh, the um, the way to make up for that shortfall in funds has been increase in tuition. And I went to a public uh, college when I was an undergraduate many many years ago. Uh, but you look at the uh, rate of inflation since when I went to college to where it is today, the cost of the, the average cost of tuition to the student has increased way above the rate of inflation. So what's happened? Well. A lot of states have pulled back on their support or their subsidy to the public higher education. And so the institutions are making up with it with 
uh, tuition increases. Uh, so yeah, this election is important. If you care about higher ed, need to listen to the, the candidates, need to listen to the proposals, and, and, and try to find the candidate who is clear and concise uh, and specific about what they're going to do about higher education. Uh, do they support more higher education? Do they support the community college system? Do they have some formula for making up for the, the, the shortfall we see in, in the subsidies for, the, for the, inst the institutions? A lot of our students on campus, and we heard a little bit of it in the video, are immigrants. And immigration sure. is a huge issue on yes. campus, in the nation as a whole. Right. Well, I, I, I'm very happy that I think um, the Maryland has been pretty progressive in terms of, of looking at uh, the DREAM Act and uh, finding ways for uh, uh, undocumented uh, immigrants who, uh, the children, uh, who are often not here because of their own, uh, uh, or on their own volition, I should right. say, uh, it have found a way to find a way to get to, to access higher ed for them. So I think that's to be applauded. Uh, we have to get past the stalemate, um, and it is a stalemate um, that unfortunately uh, at the national level is a result of a, a need to politic rather than govern. Um, govern people who, are, who want to, be gov to govern and people who are responsible about governing would say, let's get some immigration reform happening, let's figure out whatever the common denominators are and build from that. Uh, and, but unfortunately, we're in this cycle where uh, the uh, politicians have let loose of the responsibility of governing and have thought about politicking full time, which means you're always trying to figure out uh, what's going to look best, best to your constituency. Uh, you're not going to necessarily compromise. That's become a dirty word. <laughs> um, uh, in order to get things done. And in a country as, as large and as diverse as this, I don't see any other way you can get things done without some compromises. Professor Smith, thank you so much for chatting with us today. I've enjoyed it immensely. Thank you so much for having me here. And speaking of getting things done, producer Marcus Rosano talked to a college employee whose job is just that. We're at the Montgomery County Council Office Building with Susan Madden, the Chief Government Relations Officer at Montgomery College. Susan, we're in this building, we're in this hearing room uh, for a reason, not just because it's cool to be here and it's got a nice setting, but Montgomery College, the County Council, um, this is all, and your job as government relations person at the college, it's all kind of tied together. Tell us about that. Well, sure. We spend a lot of time in this room, uh, Dr. Pollard and many of our colleagues, to talk to the council about what we do, how we do it, our mission uh, of changing lives. And But most fundamentally, we come here to talk about resources. The county council, the nine members that serve the body and sit in this chamber, make the final decisions on um, how to spend the county's taxpayers' dollars, some of which comes to Montgomery College. And talk a little bit about your role as Chief Government Relations Officer and how you have to well establish relationships with this nine member uh, panel um, and how you know your background at the college, uh, how, how does that bring together you know the council and the college? Well, first and foremost, you know the council has oversight over the work that we do. So the fact that we are a terrific community college lays the best foundation for any relationship with decision makers. We have great faculty, very good students, all engaged in learning and changing their lives. So that's number one. Beyond that, I help Dr. Pollard, the Board of Trustees, and our students engage in their local government or their state government, engage in democracy, to have that conversation about what should our community's priorities be, and hopefully education is top among them, and then hopefully the community college, the community's college, is truly number one among all of those other things for priorities for dollars and policy making as well. Now, you didn't just wake up and decide you're going to be the government relations officer at Montgomery College. It had to start a while ago. Um, tell us a little bit of how you became involved in the political process. Well, actually, it's a, it started long ago when I was a kid, actually, in high school. I was president of the political affairs club so yes, I was a geek from way back when, and I, um, I got involved in political campaigns. I worked on the United States Senate campaign for a gentleman named Paul Songas, who 
won that seat and went on to run for the um, United States president um, in the Democratic primary for that. Been engaged in that kind of work ever since. Uh, was in student government in college, set up the Women's Caucus as part of the Uni University of Massachusetts uh, student government. Um, and then I eventually worked here for 12 years. Great, great job. Great place to work. So if you're looking for some place to um, grow and experience and participate in local government and government that makes things happen and changes people's lives, the county council is one of those places. But it was time to move on at a certain point, and I came to the college because it's a you know, a great place to work. And s keeping to the college, let's talk about what the students can do and how they can engage in these processes and maybe some, you know, some tips that students could get involved with helping you and helping Dr. Pollard, you know, I guess uh, change the policies and help, you know, with the students being engaged mm -hmm. when it comes to these decision makers. Certainly students, whether you're a high school student and on the Board of Education or a student on the Board of Trustees at Montgomery College play a great role in talking about the value of their institution and how uh, the college makes a difference in their life and the lives of so many others. So uh, first of all, you could be on the Board of Trustees. Great opportunity to be the advocate for the college. Um, you could participate in student government on your particular campus or you could be a student who's engaged in their political science class, come to Student Advocacy Day. We bring students to Annapolis so that they can see, feel, taste, and touch their state government at work and how those decision makers impact the future of the college. And I guess uh, we have a couple of minutes and the last question I'll ask you. Um, what is some advice that you would give to aspiring either politicians or I wouldn't say lobbyists, but people, that, students that want to get involved in this process, much like you, and, you know, and have a career in, in politics, uh, some advice that you might want to give them to help them along their trail? So I think no matter what career interest you have, you should go out and experience it. Get an internship, volunteer. That's what I did as a young girl in high school got bit by the bug and stayed with it till today. Mm -hmm. um, but th it, that's true of any career. Um, my daughter wants to be a high school teacher, so her in her senior year of um, high school herself, I said, take the time, go intern at a school, and she did do that. So go experience to see, is this something I'm truly interested in? Is this something that I could feel passionate about? Because no matter what job you have, you should be passionate about your work, because you gotta get up and do it every day, day in and day out. So you should love your work. I love mine, I'm passionate about the college, it makes it easy to do what I do. Um, and in my work, if I can't be passionate about the college, none of these folks are gonna be passionate about the college. So I say, do what you love. And the only way to figure that out is to go experience. So, so get an internship, volunteer, join a campaign, find people who have like minds, join a political action club, you know, we had lots of students who were dreamers out there who engaged in all kinds of democratic activities, the small d democratic, advocating to legislators here and in Annapolis. So go experience it, dive in, and then if that's what you think you like, then major in public policy, major in political science. I'm a political science major. Um, so that's what I would do. Well, thank you, Susan, well, for bringing us and, and showing us your old stomping grounds. Right? I'm glad you're here at Montgomery College with us now. For Campus Conversations, I'm Marcus Rosano. Thanks, Marcus. Susan mentioned some great ways for MC students to get some hands-on experience. We're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll meet some students who are doing just that.
Sophomore Carlos Mejia Ramos just began his term as the state-appointed student member of the Montgomery College Board of Trustees. The position is appointed for one year and gives a voice to students at the highest level of MC administration. I was born in Honduras um, and I came to the United States when I was eight. You know, where I grew up it wasn't uh, the richest part of the city. Um, there's a lot of uh, p poverty around me. Um, so as a family, we'd always try to help out um, our neighbors uh, and we would always to go out around and kind of f feed the, the needy and the homeless on like the, on a weekend. So it was always in kind of engraved into me that we always need to be others focused. I'm Carlos Mejia Ramos and I am the student trustee for Montgomery College Board of Trustees. I need to be prepared to read a lot. Um, other than that, I, you know, they say it's a very rewarding experience. Um, you know, you get to work and meet just different people, um, even college employees and just students. So that's what I think I'm most looking forward to. Um, it's just getting to know people and getting to know their story. I really do want to just be mindful of students' needs and just what we decide at the table, how can it impact them in a greater scene? Not just the current students, but all the future students that are about, you know, to enroll and see in future years to come. I've always had a really strong passion for politics and for um, community service and public service in that sense. I'll be finishing my uh, associates here um, by the spring and um, at the same time I'll be doing a, a political science at UMBC Shady Grove campus. Um, but my final goal is to make it to a law school right after I finish with my bachelor's. And so this is kind of like the first stepping stone. As we mentioned earlier, MC has a student government at each of its campuses, and it's a great way for students to get involved and make a difference. My name is Mason Rothwell Buren. I'm a second year student here at Montgomery College. I'm a business major involved with the Mathlin Business Institute, Renaissance Scholars, and the Montgomery College Rockville Student Senate. Mason has served as a center at large um, throughout last year, and he was elected to serve as the current president of the Student Senate, and so he is a great leader. He is um, a student who's very involved. I found that they offered opportunities on campus to get involved with student government and really advocating for the students. Um, so I saw that, sought out that opportunity September last year and I got involved from day one. And I've been involved ever since and I've loved every chance I've gotten with it. Student government plays an extremely important role on the campus. They are the advocates of the students. They listen to the feedback that the students are giving them. They are um, great advocates at the dean's level, the vice president's level. They are the connection, or the liaison between what's happening on the campus and the students' needs and concerns, and then the administration. Um, the second part, which makes them so important on campus, is they also help us program. So they will come up with ideas of events or different activities that the students um, have said that they want to do and that they're able to really accomplish and bring that sense of community to the campus. We have three student senates, um, one at Germantown campus, which I think has around nine or ten members. Um, there's one in Tacoma Park, which actually did a, a lot of work this past year. Um, they worked with the school to set up the, um, the bus system between Rockville and Tacoma Park, so we're all really intrigued about how that's going to work out this year. Um, and then we at uh, Rockville campus, we focus a lot on community events. Um, so, so through the MC's Got Talent Show, um, Fall Festival, among many others. It really makes a difference in how they feel about the community. So a student can just come to campus and leave, but they will never necessarily get that real connection or vision of the bigger picture of what Montgomery College um, truly is. And that is to build that bigger sense of, I belong to something greater. And by joining something like the Student Senate, they really feel like they're making a difference. It's in your own hands as a Senate to do what you guys want and to really serve as representatives of the student body. So a lot of the year, it's really focusing on what we want to do. Two years ago, the Senate raised about $5,600 um, for the MC's Got Talent Show student scholarships. 
uh, this past year, after we implemented the fundraising committee, we had about $9,107 in student scholarships. We're trying to break the $10,000 um, fundraising amount this year. Um, so we're going to start the fundraising early. Optimally the week, the first week of March. The reward for me um, has been taking the initiative with the fundraising last year and then inevitably running for president of the Senate. A lot of it is with leadership development and I think the, the Student Senate has offered one of the best opportunities to really develop your leadership and management skills here at Montgomery College. It's really been through the opportunities at Montgomery College that I've pursued that I've really come to love education. Um, I've never done this well um, with my academic pursuits. And a lot of it comes to be through the activities on campus, whether it's through Student Senate, MC Enactus, Macklin, Renaissance. Uh, they really motivate you to do well, to reach your highest limits, um, and to really prepare yourself for the next level of things. Marcus, it's been so great today to hear how so many students have really found their voices. And speaking of students, the, the Montgomery College epitome of a student that got involved, a student that was um, civically responsible, is a name that a lot of people will recognize when I say it, is Jonathan Jays Green. He's a Montgomery College graduate, um, but before he came to Montgomery College, he was at John F. Kennedy uh, High School. He's actually, he's actually a Panamanian immigrant, um, but at John F. Kennedy High School, he was named the Community Service Student of the Year. Wow. He was involved in the Maryland Democratic Latino Leadership Council. He came to Montgomery College, and all he did here was become the Student Board of Trustee, like we had heard from Carlos um, earlier. So Jonathan um, really wanted his voice to be heard. He took an active role, and at this today, even today, he's a, he's an activist um, with Amnesty International. Mm -hmm. So he went on from Montgomery College to Goucher. He got his political science degree at Goucher, and now what he's doing is he's the administrative director of Governor O'Malley's Commission on Hispanic and Caribbean Affairs. So he started at Montgomery County Public Schools at JFK and he went to Montgomery College, he got involved in the governance system here and then he went to Goucher College, the four-year college and then now he's working with Gov Governor O'Malley. So that's basically the blueprint um, and you know and how fabulous is that that you know a kid from Montgomery College and from MCPS moved his way up and now he's making a career out of being you know civically responsible and I might add if you go to Jonathan's Twitter page it's got a picture of Montgomery College as his background so you can't beat that. Absolutely thanks so much Marcus and we're out of time for today but for more information about any of the topics we cover on Campus Conversations visit montgomerycollege.edu slash campusconversations. Mm -hmm.